In this video, we're going to discuss the aircraft and landing zone behaviors. Uh, so I have an aircraft set up here and we have an objective. If you see on the nav bar, there's a crash site, a little orange indicator there, and that's where we'll be heading today. So let me get in the helicopter and go ahead and start taking off. You see I'm swirling up some dust there, but that'll dissipate in a second. And I'm just going to point my helicopter towards the crash site, gain some altitude here, and away we go. Okay, 13,000 feet ought to be probably pretty good. And uh, airspeed, we can pick that up a little bit for now. Now, I'm pressing the W key to pick up that airspeed, but I want to stop at some certain point, right? Because if I don't, it'll keep accelerating to the max. And so I don't want uh, to overshoot the landing zone. So I now taken my hand off the key and it is moving on its own in the direction that I'm facing. I don't have to continuously hold it like do in some games. Now, we should see the crash light appear pretty soon. There'll be some smoke rising from the trees. You can almost see it now if, you're, if you know what to look for like I do. You'll see it here pretty soon. And we'll want to bring that speed down because it doesn't exactly stop on a dime. Uh, notice that when I press forward or backward, the helicopter kind of lifts or backs up. So I think that was a, a neat detail. Um, we're going to slow down just a little bit. There's a smoke on the, on the tree line. So we're just going to slow down. And what we're looking for is a place to land. Now, I tried to experiment with a few things. You could do like maybe like a little yellow indicator or something like that. Um, there's a sound that you can play when you're over the top of the landing zone. So there's different ways to approach this. I would ultimately went with the sound just to really have a, uh, object that looked good as a, as a yellow beam or something like that. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to get right over this little clearing in the tree line. And we also want to get down a little ways because it's only going to detect me above it from a certain, uh, altitude. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I'm just pressing the shift key to bring it down. And assuming that I'm within range and I'm uh, down far enough, i got to get down closer to the tree line. Get down a little bit further. And get forward. We should hear it beep. There it goes. And when it does that, that tells me I'm over the landing zone. And I get this new text here. It says landing zone detected. Press X to commence the landing zone. Or auto landing zone. So I'm going to press X, and that's bringing me down automatically. I'm no longer touching the keyboard, it's just bringing me down slowly. Now what I could do is I could press the space bar, and that'll bring me down a lot faster, which is, believe me, is nice, because otherwise it would take a long time for us to get down to the ground. But you kind of want that like slow descent so you're not like crashing down onto the ground. And so it's just a little more realistic that way, I think. And once it hits the ground, it stops, it's going to eject me automatically. So here I'm going to hit the ground, it's soft, and then it puts me outside of the helicopter. Uh, so now we can go over to the little crash site that I've made here. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any survivors in a wreck like this. You can see that there's, there's the co-pilot, there's the, the pilot there in the crash. So that is a total loss of the aircraft, unfortunately. Uh, but... That's the aircraft and landing zone behaviors. Let's go see how it works. All right, so we're back at the aircraft. Press the, or I'm gonna click on the aircraft, click on the behaviors uh, drop down. And we'll walk through this together. Now, there are different kinds of aircraft. I obviously chose helicopter for this demonstration, but you could also make a plane and you can make a vertical takeoff or landing vehicle. The vertical takeoff and landing is very similar to helicopter. So let me just show you that. I'm going to choose that, quickly re-demonstrate this. Okay. Uh, we'll get in the helicopter. And as I lift off, it's very similar, right? Uh, the difference has to do with the way it off, like the way it controls. So see how I'm using the mouse and the mouse is uh, controlling the the way it kind of tilts up forward and back it's no longer movement that's doing that so i can kind of hover um, and maybe look down at the ground um, i'm using the uh, air the wsd keys to turn 
but I'm using the mouse to kind of control the pitch. Uh, so then I could make a game that's maybe a little bit more like floaty like this. I didn't like the way that was when it came to trying to play it because I'm just not that good. So I, that's why I chose the helicopter, but it's very similar. It just takes a little practice, a little getting used to. And then of course a plane operates kind of similarly to that in the way that the pitch and the roll work, but it, you have to move forward. You can't take off vertically. You have to take off uh, kind of horizontal and gain some speed and, and then you can gain altitudes, but it's very similar otherwise. So we'll stick to helicopter for now. Use range, same as always, just how close you have to be to the object in order to interact with it. Uh, prompt text is what are you going to see once you're in that use range. The use text, WASD control, mouse pitch, roll. Um, that would only apply, of course, to the VTOL of the plane. Q to exit, craft, and so on. You don't really want to change any of these uh, this text unless you're willing to crack open the code and change the controls as well. Probably not a good idea. I would just leave that as is. Space uh, up, shift down. Uh, obviously just to elevate to change elevation you've got lz text that's the landing zone text so once we get over the landing zone assuming there is one then what is it going to tell you and again probably i mean you could modify some of the language but the, you don't want to change the control unless you're willing to change the code uh, now i don't know if you notice but there's a display in the helicopter that tells us the elevation and also the speed. We, I alluded to that a couple of times. The display is this here. So this is just the coordinates on the screen, X and Y, where is that supposed to show up? So remember that X starts at zero on the left and goes up towards a hundred at the right. So 50 would be directly in the center of the screen. Now it may not have appeared that it was directly in the middle of the screen because remember in the helicopter, I'm not directly in the middle of the helicopter. I'm in the pilot seat to the left. So it was actually in the center of the screen. I personally wasn't, my perspective wasn't. So if that seemed off center, that's why. And then we have the Y. Now with Y, zero's up at the top, 100's down at the bottom. So we wanted this down at the center of the bottom of the screen. That's where the display text would be. And then the pilot X, Y, and Z offset, this is obviously going to vary depending on the aircraft that you're using. I had to work on this to get my position as close as possible. I didn't really spend a ton of time on it, but I got it eh, fairly good. You know, I might've uh, pushed it forward a little bit, but it was good enough for, for the demo. And then we have the max speed. Now I capped my max speed at 15 just so I wouldn't accidentally over accelerate and have a hard time slowing down. Uh, but you saw that 15 was pretty good speed. It, I think it just depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a plane, you probably want a little bit more speed. And then you have the velocity, which is the same thing. You don't want it to uh, accelerate too quickly if it's a helicopter, but if it's a plane, you probably want it to go a little faster. So you just want to dial that in for your use case. You have the FX animation. So in my case, it's these rotors that are moving. That's the uh, rotor animation that I want to uh, happen when the aircraft is in motion. We have the modulation. How fast should that animation play out? And 60 seemed right to me. Now, uh, the readouts goes back to the display that we saw up here. We don't have to display those if we don't want to. I don't know why you wouldn't, but options are great. So checkbox, it'll tell you whether or not that's displayed. The particle number was a little tricky. Um, there is a particle. You saw that that uh, smoke that, that came out when I started the aircraft. That is the particle that I'm playing, and it has a number. So if we look in our uh, object search or particle. There's actually a lot of particles because I got all those fires in there. The very last one that I put in was the smoke and that has a number. That number is 457. So that's the number that I referenced there under the particle number and that's how it knows which one to play. Uh, the checkbox can bail out obviously just enables you to jump out of the aircraft even though you're above the ground if you need to so if you're about to crash or if there's some reason why you need to jump out and maybe you have a parachute behavior on you want to jump out of the plane you could do that um, i didn't really need it so i didn't check the box now uh, we have uh, the weapon uh, name so you could choose to have a weapon if I, in this case i didn't really need a weapon so i chose no weapon 
but if I wanted to, I could choose like a gun. Uh, so you'd probably want to choose like a machine gun or something. If the uh, helicopter is armed, this one is obviously. So you could choose a machine gun. You saw I had a cursor. That cursor might change depending on the gun that you choose, but you can uh, play around with that and see what works for you. But you can have a weapon. You can shoot enemies on the ground if you wanted to. So you could make a little helicopter fight game if you wanted. Uh, the weapon ammo. This is really just the same as the gun that you're using, right? So if I'm using, let's say for instance, I'm trying to find a gun, a uh, submachine gun. So let's say I'm using that and it's that submachine gun ammo that I'm using. And it's really that weapon that I'm using. It's kind of an illusion. It's not really the helicopter shooting. It's the, the player shooting, but uh, it's meant to look like the helicopter shooting uh obviously you'd want to check this box if you're using a weapon otherwise you can leave that unchecked the crosshairs just came with the behavior you can change the crosshairs to any other crosshair image you have but that just was the default stock so i left it alone and then we have the sound now i used some sound that came with max it was like in the test uh area for um, this model and it was called helicopter start, helicopter uh, flight, helicopter stop, but it was very loud. And so I ended up going and taking the sound down on those. So hopefully that was quiet enough. I really tried hard to get that to sound right, but also not be so loud that it drowned me out when I was talking to you. So hopefully that'll pan out in the video, but uh, that's why it says mod there is because I modified it. Uh, but that's the sounds that I chose to use. So you have the sound slot one, obviously, is the start when you start up the engine and you get that rotor spinning. And then the flight sound is a, it should be a loop, right? The helicopter loop or the plane loop or whatever it is that you're, you're flying. And then, of course, the stop as it stopped and it kind of uh, wind down the, the rotors. You heard that at the very end. And the only other sound slot that you have here is for uh, crashing. So if you were to crash, it obviously should be make an explosion. It should sound like an explosion or something like that. I wasn't going to crash, so I didn't bother using it. Uh, now let's jump over to the landing zone and take a look at that and see how that works. But real quick, I want to show you something in case you're not aware. Some people just aren't aware. Here in this drop down, you have the detailed object list. These are all the objects that are in the scene, presumably. Now, in this case, um, this is a reused level, so you see a whole bunch of different stuff in here. But if I just type in helicopter and I go to the crashed helicopter, it's just going to jump me directly to that location. And you saw how far away I was, so I'm going to try to find that. would have been needle in a haystack. So I just found that useful to be able to jump around in different places in the uh, level. So here's our landing zone. I made it pretty large. It's just as a zone behavior. And it's pretty simple. We have the base height, which is 100. The best way I could explain that is just leave it alone. <laughs> um, base height is just like any other zone. It should have a base height to it. Uh, but you don't want to manipulate that. because Think of that as the floor, the bottom of it. And then you have the zone height. How far up does it extend? Now, I extended this up 7,000 uh, units, which isn't as high as you might expect because you saw I had to get within a couple thousand elevation in order for it to catch on to me. So play around with that. Make sure that it's catching you. But ultimately, what I was going for is just above the tree line. And that's ultimately close enough to where, where I got it. Uh, in this case, spawn at start. If you want it on when the game loads, then you'd click that checkbox. Otherwise, you could activate the zone by some other means, and then it would be active later. Uh, you could do that as well. And then, of course, the sound is going to be when you enter the zone, what sound does it play? I thought that was very helpful because I had the hardest time figuring out, like, am I over the landing zone? Why isn't it working? Why isn't it... Uh, you know, giving me the prompt text and then having that sound kind of let me know that I got into, I just picked a beep, like a little beep that I had, but any sound will do just whatever you have uh, makes sense for your use case. Uh, but that's it. That's the aircraft and the landing zone behaviors explained as they are today. Now I got a request recently 
from a good friend of mine, Glitch Pixels, because he was looking to make a game that's kind of like an arena game. Kind of hard to be, for me to explain, but I'll show a clip right here of it. And you can see it's kind of like a hovercraft fighting game. And he was asking me, well, you know, he was actually thinking of the speeder behavior. And I thought, well, actually aircraft would be probably better. And helicopter really is very close. And I was talking to Necrom about it and he may be adding some more features to this. So look out for those. But if you don't see them in this video, that's why it's because it's, it's still in progress. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that was explained. Uh, but anyways, that's it for the video today. If you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything new, please be sure to click the like button down below. It helps me out a lot. If you're new here or if you just haven't subscribed yet, thank you, welcome, and I'd love to have you stick around. Please be sure to subscribe. And lastly, if you'd like a notification for whenever a new video is posted, just click the bell icon and that'll let you know when a new video is ready. Uh, thanks so much for watching all the way through. I always appreciate that. I really do. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Hey, don't forget there's a written guide for every behavior, including ones I haven't yet uh, covered on this channel. And if you want to learn some more, why don't you check out this video next?